Deathloop is like an addictive video game onion that peels back more layers the more you succumb to death, so you might as well have some sick guns while doing so. I am Alex, and I'm going to be showing you a few powerful or just flat out fun weapons you can grab early to save for future runs. After you get out of the tutorial and unlock the infusion system, which allows you to keep goodies in between death, you can immediately go accumulate some really good guns if you know where to look. Some of these are just laying around waiting to be found, some will need a bit of puzzle solving skills, and others will just require a small dose of murder. So let's get into it. First up, why would anyone not want a sniper rifle rocket launcher, let's be honest. This thing is accurate at super long range, can AoE blast grouped up enemies, or get cowards who are trying to hide behind cover. This rifle comes with the More Bang perk, which detonates your bullets on impact, and you can find it at the complex in the morning. Head for the large satellite tower, and you'll see a blue building right next to it. There is an enemy hanging out on the railing on top of that building, and when focusing on them, they have listed Cool Gun, indeed. Get up there, kindly ask to borrow the thing, and you'll have the pleasure of utilizing this crazy gun. It can be used from the hip pretty well as a foot shooter using that ground explosion to your advantage, or you can aim down the sights with it to take super precise shots. No joke, this thing has immense range and is very accurate, but even if you miss, the detonation will likely get them anyways. Also, being scared of getting close to turrets to hack them will be a thing of the past because this will destroy them in one single click of the fire button. So ultimately, if you plan on playing loud, tend to rather blow stuff up than sneak, and want a jack-of-all-trades weapon for medium to long range, I recommend seeking out this super strong rifle. Next, there's a pistol you can get from killing a visionary that releases toxic gas clouds on impact, but if you combine those green fumes with another bullet, it makes for a nice area of effect explosive as well. If you head to Carl's Bay in the morning, you'll find Harriet in the northern part of the map in a large warehouse. After Harriet is taken down and turned into a light show, you'll find a pistol around the body. That comes with the ability Toxic Haze, which releases poison gas when your bullets come in contact with something. This can make up for your lousy aim by doing degen in an area around the target, be used to flush out enemies from cover, or to create little gas traps which can be used to detonate. Later on, you can also combine this with the Steel Lungs perk, which turns toxic fumes into lovely vapors. With that, simply fire at the ground, and the gases will regenerate your health in between or during fights, just be careful with shooting or being shot while standing in that gas, because, you know, it explodes. So if you want to get a bit more creative in your combat encounters, rather than just nailing perfect headshots and moving on, I recommend grabbing this toxic haze gun early, because it's just flat out fun to mess around with. Next, the ultimate boomstick, a gun that can transform from a long-range rifle to a strong short-range shotgun. This is one of the harder to acquire rare guns, so light spoilers on where and how to get this. To find this, you will first need to head to Carl's Bay in the evening. You will then need to head to the now open Fathoms of Lament building to where you will find the weapon locked up. The nearby map on the wall will change from day to day with flashing bulbs indicating little boxes you'll need to go and find without resetting the day. It's random which of these little environmental puzzles you'll get, but some are definitely trickier than others. One especially to look out for has a countdown timer when you enter the building as you need to find four digits hidden in that area to open a door before that timer expires. Fail just this one and you will need to reset your timeline, so don't fail it. After you get all those gifts, all the lights on the map should now be solid, and the door off to the side is now opened. For the finale, you're presented with a traversal challenge where you'll need to activate switches quickly while avoiding laser beams, which will reset the challenge if you touch any. You can luckily keep doing this one if you fail, and once complete, finally, that container for your gun is opened. After all that, make sure you have at least 9,000 currency on you so you can infuse and save this gun because you definitely don't want to have to do this entire process all over. The Heritage gun you now have can toggle between two different firing modes and has a perk which buffs the opposite mode after inflicting damage with the other. The rifle mode is surprisingly accurate and can hit targets from a good distance away. The shotgun mode is much shorter range but is super strong for close range combat. Instead of worrying about taking multiple guns into an area, I can just throw on the heritage gun and destroy about anything the game throws at me. Next, if you're more the dishonorable sneaky type sulking around in the shadows, you might just want a quieter gun. 
If you head over to the complex at any time of day, you'll find this little lab which is directly above one of the entry points for the map. You'll need to break into the place by either hacking the two turrets inside from outside the nearby window, or you can go in through the roof and quickly just pull out the batteries from the turrets. After that, your prize will be sitting nicely on this little box, which is a SMG with the suppressor perk, which reduces the sound of firing it. This isn't 100% silence, but it's somewhat close, and works best when no one has eyeballs on your target. It can also be really useful for taking out scanners from a distance, solid Sam Fisher snake style. So if you want to be stealthy, but still manically kill stuff, this gun is the way to go. Next, is it a SMG? Is it two pistols? Yes. This is another transforming weapon that gives you a 4 burst SMG and two double burst firing pistols all in one. Also, this is one of the rarer guns, so light spoilers incoming. To find this, you'll have to go to the complex at noon and seek out this location tucked off to the side of the underground bunker. Here you'll need to find some batteries to power the nearby door, and remember that place we were just in for the last gun, well, that houses tons of batteries to easily complete this one. Once you have power, you can open the locked door and grab these buttes. This thing is another great all-around weapon, but the burst firing can chew through ammo fast, so throw on some of those expanded ammo passives if you have them. And very last, these two are more like little bonuses since they're weapons you'll likely always have at your disposal. First, don't underestimate your machete, because it's perfectly viable to play entirely melee if you build out your character right. By throwing on Bloodthirsty Brawler, you recover health from melee kills, and I often also put on faster move speed and party time, which reduces incoming damage when people are nearby. You can also dual wield a gun with the machete, and if you find a weapon with the run and gun perk, you can fire while sprinting so you can play full on barbarian. Next, another weapon you'll always find around the maps are the immensely powerful turrets. You don't want to just toss these out and then activate them because you can't control which way they face, and just setting them down means you also have to then activate them. However, if you hold down the drop button, you can quickly place a turret and it will automatically go into sentry mode. This lets you use the turrets much more offensively at the last second, rather than defensively hoping someone stumbles upon your trap. There is also a passive called Mechanical Affinity, which amplifies the power of your turrets if you really want to make full use of them. Turrets can pretty much play the game for you if you're trying to keep your hands clean. And with that, those are all the early weapon suggestions I had for you, so try to grab them towards the start of your Deathloop adventures. This turned out to be a pretty unique twist on the roguelite genre, and it becomes rather addicting after you start fully understanding how all the underlining systems are working. What seems like a fairly straightforward stealth shooter at the start quickly turns into a somewhat more violent Groundhog's Day. Now before you go, if you happen to enjoy my channel's focus on digging into the sweet bits of core gameplay mechanics, consider sticking around on Boomstick Gaming. As always, this has been Alex, thanks for giving this a watch, and good luck breaking the loop.